Welcome to the April edition of Signal for our Signal conversation during our sustainability issue. We have Tom Zaki, the founder and CEO of TerraCycle and uh, an alumnus of Signal. Tom gave a compelling talk in 2017 at Signal. So it's been four years and I'm excited to get caught up with Tom. Um, TerraCycle is based in New Jersey um, and recently launched a innovative product called Loop which is a service that Tom likens to a 21st century milkman. Um, the service sells brand name goods like Tide, Pantene, Gillette, um, all in reusable packages. And participants can pay a refundable deposit for the package, use the products and return via the Loop service. So I wanna talk about that and a lot more uh, here for our sustainability issue. Welcome, Tom. Thanks for having me. When we met you four years ago, TerraCycle was really in a very different place than it is now. Um, I think the first thing I'd like to hear about is your growth over the last four years. It's really come into its own and, and become quite a force. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey over the last four years? Yeah, it's been it's been quite amazing. I mean, we've been this we're in year 19. So we're you know, we've been around for a little while, uh, but we tripled the size of our business in the past uh, four years. Uh, it's been quite explosive and it continues to be, you know, uh, you know and I think a major reason for this is that uh, people are waking up to the issue of waste. It's uh, it's maintaining as a crisis. So you have a lot of consumer demand, uh, legislative, you know, uh, the media is really pushing. A lot of major organizations have made commitments uh, around 2025 or 2030. So those are coming in. Into, uh, into focus and uh, the systems that are out there to help make you know products uh, recyclable or compostable or reusable are challenged and you know with macroeconomic forces going in the wrong direction you know low oil prices bad end market so for all these reasons uh, our business has just been absolutely uh, uh, exploding during this time and even during COVID we grew and so it's been it's been quite amazing and we're feeling uh, just really privileged to be able to be riding that wave right now. So let's level set before we get into a bit more detail. Um, you know, if you're at a dinner party and someone asks you, what is TerraCycle? What's your concise answer to that question? We're a waste management company that is all about innovating and elevating waste. That would be like my very concise answer. And then, you know, the way we, we achieve that is we sort of do three things. We collect and recycle things that are not traditionally recyclable, you know, from Pampers diapers to Gillette razor blades. We help make products from waste, you know, so say ocean plastic into head and shoulders bottles and so many other examples. And then we help uh, things become reusable so we can get away from a single use ecosystem, you know, where it's the best thing to do is to collect and recycle and make from recycled content to reusable systems where ideally there is no waste, all in the spirit of elevating and uh, making waste something more than we see it as today. As a matter of fact, I think your mission is to eliminate the idea of waste. What do you mean by that? Yeah, it exactly is, right? And isn't it interesting, you know, usually garbage companies would call themselves waste management companies, right? They're in the business of managing waste. In fact, uh, if people uh, produce less waste, their business goes down. They want waste to exist. You know, we believe that uh, waste is a modern idea. You know, I, I've written a number of books on this, and uh, I think, you know, my philosophy is that it was only really invented in the 1950s when... Uh, we moved into complex materials and hyper-consumerism. And those two things are the recipe of, uh, of waste. And it does, it's not a natural idea. It doesn't exist in nature. There's no such thing as waste other than in the human system. And so we have outputs. We're going to always have outputs, but we should never have waste. And uh, we need to return to that state, which is what we were in until the 50s and what nature has been in all along, to live in balance uh, 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 you know, with the environment. So it's not about not having outputs. It's that those outputs are desired by some other system as, as an input. Just like when I exhale carbon dioxide, the tree desires that and breathes it in. Or just like, you know, I mean, any output that's natural. If I, you know, poop in a toilet, that poop is desired by microorganisms and other creatures that really need that to survive. But does anyone desire my candy wrapper or coffee cup? Probably not. And I just fell in love with garbage because waste is such an interesting uh, category full of anomalies. I mean, we don't learn about it at all, even though, you know, I mean, think about it this way. Every object that you see right now in the room you're in or anyone watching this, and don't just think about like maybe, you know, a, uh, a disposable object in front of you, but literally your glasses, your, your clothing, you know, your shoes, the floor you're standing on, the chair you're, sta you're sitting in, 100% of that will be property of a garbage company one day with not a single exception. And that's a wild mm -hmm. idea. And 99% of it within the year you bought it. And so 
in a world where we, Wait a minute, you know, let me stop you there. Ninety nine percent of it within a year that you bought it. That's correct. that's a pretty remarkable stat. Yeah, isn't it? But it's but that's it. I mean, it's that has to do with all the single use or short life products we purchase, right? right. Only one percent of the goods we buy last more than a year. It's 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 absolutely uh, uh, astounding. And so for how monstrously big an idea that is. It's 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 crazy how uninnovative the solutions are. I mean, the global solutions to waste are put in a pile or burn it. One percent, two percent is recycled. And if you look at the waste industry, uh, there's been studies that show that it is the least innovative industry per dollar of revenue it enjoys. And I think it has to do with the fact that it's just biologically undesirable. I mean, you know, it is literally, you know, smelly, dirty. I mean, you know, it is literally a shit show. I mean, there's no, it, it swims in that stuff. And so no one's really attracted to it. They're attracted to, you know, high tech and fashion and other things that are more, you know, sort of sexy. It's ways like the opposite of sexy. So it is a beautiful recipe for innovation because no mm -hmm. one's doing anything and it's a massive sector and it's incredibly purposeful. So it's, uh, it allows it to be a really exciting life project because you literally can work with everything. I mean, our clients range from, you know, uh, from P&G all the way to Ikea to Apple. And, you know, that's on just on the B2C side. And because every object one day has a waste of that. Yeah, yeah, it's fascinating. Um, I, I wanted to uh, ask you about uh, Loop, this idea of creating a new consumer behavior um, where people have, uh, instead of buying containers that get thrown out, they have reusable containers uh, and you create a, a really a new cycle of use. Um, what I'm interested in is from the big company side, the, you know, the companies that fill those containers with product. It, it strikes me that perhaps one of your greatest challenges might be in convincing those companies to rethink almost everything about how they produce, uh, how they distribute, how they market their product because it's so tied into this idea of you know uh, wasteful containers. Can you tell us a little bit about how Loop came to be and 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 you know am I am I right in in, in intuiting that that might be one of the big issues? Absolutely, um, you are quite right, and I think that 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 expands actually to all three of the most important stakeholders: the consumers, the brands, and the retailers. I think would all echo what you just said. So very quickly, I mean, how did it come to be is it was actually a very sort of particular moment. I was I remember this, uh, it was January 2017. And I'm on stage with uh, uh, Virginie, who's the CSO at PNG, and we're at Davos launching a shampoo bottle uh, with head and shoulders made from beach plastic. And we were then right after that press conference, you know, doing interviews, but we were sitting in the green room together and, you know, sort of uh, waiting for calls coming in from journalists, and there was some sort of downtime. And we started asking ourselves, like, is recycling, and making things from recycled content, which is the big mega strategy and entirely TerraCycle's business up until that point, is that the answer to garbage? And we both landed that, well, it's an answer to the symptom of waste, but not the root cause of waste. And so that started this academic journey on, well, what is the root cause of waste? Now, we landed on single use, you know, the idea of, uh, and so it's not plastic or a material, it's this idea of using something once. And then the question was, well, how do we solve for it? And if you think about, you know, reusable systems, multi-use systems, um, as we started really academically, again, looking at them, because there was a lot of sort of thought before saying loop is the answer, um, there are all, already reuse systems at scale. Our propane tank in the United States is functioning reuse. So is our beer keg. But what's an issue in this is you can't take the propane tank to the beer store and you can't take your beer keg to a Home Depot. Uh, you have to stay in these sort of, let's call it mono supply chains. You have to stay in the lane. And okay, while that works for low frequency, high value objects like a beer keg and a propane tank, how can you possibly extend that to your Tide laundry detergent and Hagen dazs ice cream and a thousand other SKUs? It's not possible. And so the answer that came back was we need a platform for reuse, a platform where consumer product companies can enter and create products that are reusable and uh, retailers can sell those and create a system where you can buy anywhere and return anywhere. Right. So, hmm. you know, uh, soon, say in the UK, you'll be able to buy your favorite products at Tesco, you know, uh, uh, and then return them to Burger King and then buy your you know, hopefully impossible Whopper and soda at Burger King you know, in a reusable pack and return it to another uh, retailer. Now, to your question, right, um, one of the other things we realized is one of the and one of the challenges in sustainability is, is this idea of behavior change. Sustainable movements many times really focus on we have to do massive amount of behavior change. And one of the 
key learnings that have been really reinforced in this you know now two year journey on Loop is that behavior change is exceptionally hard. So it, for all actors, yeah. brands, retailers, and consumers. So the real answer is how do we change behavior the least to achieve the biggest outcome? Because that will uh, achieve scale quickly. So Loop's philosophy was we need to put convenience on a pedestal and uh, the gold standard for convenience is throw something out disposable you know is incredibly convenient how do we make it feel as disposable as possible so that we're asking for the least amount of behavior change so the answer was let's make it feel as disposable as possible to a retailer you know buy goods from your vendors put them on a shelf and sell them and then there's the missing sort of operational function which is then someone has to deal with the waste management function of reuse you know taking the getting the bottles back uh sorting them out returning deposits cleaning and so on so that's what loop fills where the waste management uh of reuse and the final perhaps most important actor is the consumer right because without the consumer voting all of this is academic um right and so the same thing with them we need it to feel like a disposable experience buy your stuff on a shelf already fill when you're done throw it out but throw it into a reuse bin and the only new concept then that is inherent in it is this idea of a deposit and that so far, I mean, I can't say Loop has been proven yet, but it's scaling very nicely. It's in four countries, two more by end of year. Um, that I think it has the best chance of success with that philosophy being very fierce of, we need this to feel as absolutely disposable as possible. If you were to wave a magic wand, Tom, and, and, and get companies to accelerate any one or two you know, behaviors, uh, such that, you know, the vision that you have uh, to eliminate the idea of waste were to come true. What would you ask your large partners to do? I think, you know, whether your package or product is, you know, whatever the use intention is, I think the most important thing is that the company fundamentally, you know, be responsible that the molecules that make up that product, they can get back and reintegrate into the same product. If we could achieve that as a design rule, whether for single use or reusable products, we would solve for waste. If we really had a design principle that if I make a shampoo bottle, that I have to somehow be able to get it back, you know, whether through municipal recycling or my own take back program or through a reuse ecosystem, whatever it may be, but that those molecules have to then make the next shampoo bottle, um, I would go tremendously far uh, 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 in solving for the concept of waste and uh, really becoming significantly more circular because yeah. uh, right now we don't do that, right? Uh, 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 it's we're picking the very best type of garbage to make our, our products, which tends to always be beverage containers. And there's just simply not enough beverage containers to go around and that's just on recycling. Now, I think reuse does that a bit more intuitively right because you know you're just cleaning the bottle and refilling it but we need to bring that type of thinking to what the mainstream problem is today which is uh how do we manage uh disposable products so that will be with us for most of our lifetime well tom i have to say you've made me think differently just in this brief period about you know the problem and 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 what you see is the opportunity of how we think about waste um, you know, best of luck in, you know, making waste sexy. I think if you can do that and get people to start to think about it in different ways, um, you know, the world will be a much better place. Where do you see TerraCycle in five years? So we're on this sort of amazing journey right now. We've really hit our hockey stick. So we're excited to hold on, strap in for the growth we're seeing. Um, our, our dream in the end is to be you know, the most innovative, interesting, you know, garbage company out there, uh, uh, really elevating waste into places it's never been before. And I'll leave you sort of with one thought as an example of what we're working on now behind the scenes to show you how far waste can go, which is uh, we learned through Loop that certain products carry diagnosable samples on them, certain waste streams. You know, your, um, uh, your uh, air filter has the sample of your air in it, your water filter sample of your water, your motor oil, your engine scrapings, even your diaper, a fecal sample, your you know menstrual product, a blood sample. We're now, you'll see in a year or two, launching services with brands where you'll be able to send in a dirty diaper. And instead of going to recycling, as we do with Pampers or reuse, as we're actually soon launching with PNG and diapers, it'll go to a laboratory that'll analyze the microbiome of the fecal sample and send you back a wellness report on your child's health. That's how far waste can go. And I think to me, we, we want to sort of try to become the Google of waste, if you will, 
in an industry that is incredibly asleep. Well, I wish you very well. That is the integration of technology, data, uh, and innovation. Um, and it sounds like an exciting future, and I'm looking forward to getting there, and we'll certainly have you back. So, Tom Zaki, thank you so much for joining us for this Signal conversation. Thanks for having me.